Hello, this is Breuer and welcome to our first impressions video for the new civilization Ethiopia. Uh, this is the new civilization in the New Frontier Pass, uh, the third one in the New Frontier Pass. Uh, and this, yet again, is a complete reaction video as well because I have not seen this video. I don't know anything about Ethiopia other than how to spell it. And even that I probably would have had to look at the... I'm just kidding. But anyway, uh, that's all I know. So let's go ahead and just jump right into the video. Menelik II leads Ethiopia in Sid Meier's Civilization VI. Best remembered for fighting off European powers, modernizing the nation, and ending slavery, Menelik established Ethiopia as a bastion against colonialism. So he fought off European powers, modernized Ethiopia, and ended slavery. So basically, this guy did a whole lot of nothing in his life. <laughs> no, in all seriousness, I mean, that's that's a pretty impressive resume. Um, I don't know anything about this guy, honestly, at all, which is actually one of the reasons why I like to play Civilization, because I learn a lot about new civilizations and new leaders and things like that that I, I didn't know. Even though, kind of once you start the game, the historical kind of aspect of uh, a lot of things kind of goes away in Civilization, because it is just a simulation of history, not an actual representation of history. Um it's still based in and rooted in history. And so it's really cool to learn about new people, new civilizations, and, and some of their backstory and things like that that got them put into the, into the game itself. Ethiopia's unique ability is called Oksuomite Legacy. Its cities earn extra faith from resources, boosted even further when international trade routes originate from resource-rich cities. All right, so extra faith from resources and it's boosted more with trade. So that's good. Now that that's a uh, we knew that this from the from the previous uh, first impressions video from the the developer update of of the whole pack. We knew that they were going to be pretty strong on the faith side of things. We didn't really know understand maybe how that faith was going to play out, uh, but already getting extra faith from resources and a little bit boosted from trade routes. Uh, I mean that's going to be a new another source of faith on top of your holy sites, which is a good way to it's good to see. It's good to see more faith coming in. The Empire can also purchase archaeological museums and archaeologists with faith. Okay, so that was the part I wasn't sure about from the last video, from the developer update video, is what all can they buy with faith? Uh, at the time, we had seen an image where they could buy all the districts with faith, but that was probably because uh, the leader that they had, or because it looks like they do have Moksha in here. Um, that's, the, that's the name of that leader, I think, right? I think so. Anyway, the, the religious leader, uh, uh, governor, I should say. So we weren't sure what all they were actually technically able to buy faith with faith on their own versus what was being added in through either city states or the governor and stuff like that. It does look like it's only the archaeological museum and archaeologists. It's still pretty strong, um, but instead of being faith based, like a faith driven uh, civilization, I mean, archaeological museum and archaeologists. I mean, are they more culture than faith? I mean, they can generate faith, but then they can just maybe just turn that around and buy, you know, culture type aspects. I don't know. We'll see. Ethiopia's unique unit is the Oromo Cavalry. This cavalry unit replaces the Corsair. It has better combat strength and sight than the Corsair and receives no movement penalty from moving on hills. Okay, so it replaces the Corsair, a little bit stronger. A little bit better vision, and it can run through hills, which is, you know, kind of one of the weaknesses of uh, of cavalry in general. Which I say weaknesses. I mean, they still move the same movement distance. It's just your movement distance goes farther on flat plains than it does on hills. On hills, they're still just able to move a couple spots, uh, whereas these guys they get to ignore that. So that's that's a nice little bonus. Um, there's going to be times where it doesn't come up at all because you're just going to be running around on the ground, and obviously, it doesn't look like they get a movement bonus through forest. So if they go through a forest. Looks like it's going to be the same movement bonus, I would imagine, as, as the normal cavalry units. Um, but it's still going to be useful in some ways. Uh, I don't know that, unless we see something else about them, but just a slightly better courser. Cool. Awesome. That's that's good. It's always good to have slightly stronger units, um, but nothing jumping out of me that says, hey, wow, this is an amazing unit. This is really going to change the game, and you're going to be able to go win a domination victory with these guys. Maybe there's more. Ethiopia's tile improvement, the rock-hewn church, can only be built on hills or volcanic soil. And multiple churches can't be built adjacent to each other. So the rock-hewn church, it looks really cool. I like the fact that it's like dug into the ground. 
and stuff like that. I'm going to have to go look it up on Google after this uh, to see one of these in real life, like a real life picture of one of these, because I don't know if I've ever seen anything like this. This is pretty cool looking. Um, but hills makes sense. Okay, I get it. And then volcanic dirt. That's interesting. Do they have a lot of volcanoes in Ethiopia? Shows how much I know about Ethiopia that I don't know that. Um, but uh, it looks, unless I'm just misreading this or unless we're about to see more about this, plus seven faith from this tile improvement. Yet another way to get faith. Still feeling like with all this extra faith, religion is still in the cards for them as a victory. Um, but it does look like culture is also in there as well from what we've seen so far. It provides faith and extra faith from adjacent mountains and hills. Oh, okay. So it gets the extra faith from the adjacencies. Gotcha. So you kind of want to put this in a spot that's good for like a, um, a uh, what is it? What, what I'm trying to call a uh, industrial zone. If you find a good place for an industrial zone, well, that's a good place for one of these because it's going to be surrounded by hills, obviously. Uh, the fact that it can be surrounded by mountains as well is also good, although that takes away from maybe a good um, you know, campus site or a holy site, right? Holy sites take, don't they get a bonus from, from mountains as well? So you're going to have to kind of bridge that gap up. I guess maybe you could put a holy site in between two of them somehow so it could still benefit from some mountains or something of that nature. We'll have to see. They can only be pillaged and not destroyed by natural disasters. Oh, uh, okay. That's interesting. I mean, it's a good bonus that you're going to be sitting literally right next to a volcano on a lot of these, but uh, not being destroyed. Just send a worker back out there, repair them back up. There you go. Still a little bit of a risk because you're going to go a few turns without them if the, if the volcano goes off, but it's not the absolute end of the world. Once you research flight, rocky and churches also produce tourism. Interesting. I was not expecting that. Okay, so there you go. We're back on the, the culture side of things with, uh, I'm assuming it's the same amount of tourism as you get from the faith, similar to how other uh, improvements that get culture, they get that, that amount of tourism once they get that knocked in. So, okay. Okay. So we're back on the culture side. I mean, still faith is still a good big component. So I can still see a religious victory maybe, but with that in place, I'm wondering if the tourism side is might be a little bit more of their, their, their primary. Menelux ability is called council of ministers. All right, let's check that this is where we really get the, a bit more detail. Um, so Council of Min uh, Ministers and Menelik II is his name. I, I've, I've been hearing her say it, but I was like, I didn't want to say it myself until I could see it because I was like, maybe I'm not hearing it right. Uh, so Council of Ministers receives science and culture equal to 15% of your faith generation in cities founded on hills. Units receive plus four combat strength on hills. So you want to found your cities on hills. That's a big deal. And that's not going to be... It is going to limit you a bit on where you can put your cities. I mean, you, there's almost always at least a hill somewhere near where I usually like to put a city. So it's not going to be uh, the worst thing in the world. It's not like I'm suddenly going to have to block off an entire section of the map because usually there's at least a hill somewhere. But it is a little bit limiting. Uh, and then the extra combat strength on hills. I mean, I could see this maybe more defensive than offensive because... Defensively, I usually put a lot of units on hills anyway, just so that when they get attacked, you know, they've already got that defensive strength. Um, if I'm attacking somebody else, I can't guarantee they're going to have hills around them. Although, if they happen to have hills around them, this negates some of that bonus, presumably. So, I don't know. Kind of an interesting uh, little bonus. I don't think it suddenly makes him a domination guy, but uh, it's just a little extra, you know, defensiveness and, and whatnot. Uh, Axumite Legacy, Ethiopia's International Trade Routes Camp. 0 0.05 or sorry 0 0.5 faith per resource at the origin okay uh improved resources provide one faith for each copy of this the city owns or for each copy the city owns okay so you want to have multiple copies for each city so if you have a way to put a city between two horses versus maybe one city with a horse one city with a horse over here i assume putting the a single city having the two resources is better, if that's what, if I'm reading that correctly. And they can purchase archaeological museums and archaeologists with faith. Okay, that's good. Oromo Cavalry, um, stronger and greater sight than the Corsair. Fine, that's, that's all well and good. And then the Raccoon Church, um, plus one faith by itself. Plus one faith for every adjacent mountain and hills tower. Provides tourism after flight from faith. Plus one appeal. Oh, that's good. It's always good to get the extra appeal since it's going to, you're going to, um, want to go the tourism route anyway getting a little extra, extra pill as well especially since these guys are going to take up some of those mountain tiles where you might want to stick some um 
Oh, I'm sorry. Ignore me. I was thinking <laughs> first for some reason I was thinking the uh ski resorts are on the mountains. Although the ski resorts, do they get their space off of appeal? So if you're surrounding uh, the Rock Moon churches around the ski resort, would the ski resort get more appeal that way? I actually don't know. I haven't played a lot with the ski resorts other than just to see them. Uh, I haven't really actually used them from a tourism victory standpoint, I don't think. So I haven't really looked into the math of those. Uh can only be pillaged, et cetera, et cetera. We already knew all that. So uh, I mean, it's interesting. He's kind of a, I wouldn't say he's a very exciting leader in a civilization. It's going to be good to play with. You know, it's going to be good for going, like I said, going for maybe a culture victory, probably as his primary. Uh, and then uh, his secondary fallback, you know, could be like a religious victory or something of some sort. Um, I do like that he gets the extra science and culture from his faith generation because it's really going to help him um, get a lot of, uh, be able to focus on the faith a lot more and still get a little bit of a bonus there. Uh, some reason I was about to say, it wasn't this is 20%, but no, that's actually one of the, um, the new, um, what was it? Uh, Secret Societies actually gives you 20% based on faith, right? Or is it 20% based on culture? Something like that. There was one that was like 20% of this other resource. You get, you know, I think it's science and culture based off faith. So getting that Secret Society for this guy would be kind of a cool combo effect to uh, uh, combo with what he's already got. But yeah, I mean, he's a good leader. He's going to be a good, good leader. I wouldn't say necessarily especially exciting leader so far. He gets extra culture and science based on his faith output in cities founded on hills. His units also get extra combat strength when fighting on hills. Ethiopia's focus is on a defensive, religious, and culture-centered game. Claim hill tiles early for your cities. The Council of Ministers' ability can keep Ethiopia well-rounded even as you try to maximize the amount of faith you are producing. If you don't win a religious victory, you can still use faith to purchase archeologists, naturalists, or even rock bands later in the game, keeping a culture victory within reach. Will you resist the powers that come at you from afar? How will you lead Ethiopia in Sid Meier's Civilization VI? All right, so there we go. I mean. Again, I wouldn't say anything like, oh my goodness, how is this a thing in the game type of, you know, reaction for me. So my reaction is not going to be quite as, it's not as exciting of a reaction as vampires, you know, from the last video. But um, overall, it seems like a good, decently strong civilization in the context of a faith. Um, no, again, no real gimmicks uh, other than you got to settle on mountains and you want to settle around, you know, uh, uh, sorry, you got to settle on hills. You want to settle around mountains with lots of hills nearby. So you just got to keep an eye out for that. But that, I think that will be fine and, and relatively easy to do for the most part. A little limiting, but still, you can still do that without too much trouble. Um, it's not like suddenly you've got to have two mountains next to every city in order to, you know, it's not some weird uh, gaminess that you have to deal with. Uh, it's just a small restriction that I think is going to be usable. You know, you can deal with that pretty easily. So not the most exciting civilization in the game, I would say. Uh, not the most crazy one you're like where like when I did the Maya reaction if you guys had seen my reaction video for that Which I wasn't showing my face count cam for seeing that adjacency for their campuses was just like whoa That's a really cool deal and definitely when we played them it turned out to be a really awesome deal So I think these guys are gonna be pretty straightforward to play with just plug them in there Get as many cities on hills as you can get as many of those churches down get some resources uh, Go for a religious victory like she said and your fallback is a culture victory, or maybe just go from the culture victory from the start and just really gear your your religion towards that culture victory mindset. So either one of those is going to be a very strong uh, bu uh, thing for him to go for. Science victory seems a little bit out of the picture for him. The uh, domination victory, I don't really see that coming up either. Although you could use your faith to to buy units, I suppose. So I guess you could kind of sort of spin that, but I'm not really seeing it that much. Uh, do, uh, diplomacy victory also not really seeing that much but it's going to be pretty strong on both the the religion and the culture and like i said pretty safe civilization i guess not every civilization has to be like oh my goodness this is crazy um some of them can just be straightforward safe and easy to predict uh what's going to happen once you kind of get into the game so yeah there you go that's my reaction for uh ethiopia please let me know what you think in the comments below if you agree with anything i said or you have some Thoughts, concerns, interest, ideas, whatever. Um, if I miss something that was just sitting there right in front of me, and I, you know, it's a lot. When I'm going through the video, sometimes I miss like a tile improvement that's new or, or something else that can be new that I, I might have missed. So let me know about that as well in the comments below. Please, if you like these types of videos, please um, like them and, and subscribe to the channel so you can see more of them. 
But yeah, I do appreciate you guys watching. May God bless you. And I hope you join me again next time. Thank you and goodbye.